Welcome to the CFA Society San Francisco Meet a Member podcast, where we interview and discuss current topics with leading members of the Bay Area investment community. This month, Tanya Subatang, Membership Manager with CFA Society San Francisco, sits down with Lauren Mathias, Senior Vice President and Non-U.S. Equity Investment Consultant at Callan, to discuss what she's learned from overseeing the Callan Connects program, as well as her experience working from home during the pandemic. Hi, Lauren. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So you're currently Senior Vice President in the Global um, Manager Research Group at Callan. You've been with the company for 16 years. Wow. How impressive is that? Um, Can you share with us how you got started with the company and maybe share what you do in your position? Yeah, for sure. Um, Funny when you say 16 years, it just makes me feel so old. Um, Also, you know, it's it is it is exciting and I do feel very lucky. I was, you know, searching for my first job out of college and I knew I wanted to be back in the Bay Area where I grew up. And so I looked in San Francisco for anything kind of finance related. I didn't know anything about the consulting industry. Um, so quick background, Callan is an investment consulting firm, um, $3 trillion of assets under advisement for large institutional plans. And so I was looking for just an entry level position, analyst position. There's a group within the firm. Um, called the Client Report Services Group. And we basically put together all the performance details for our client portfolios. So yeah, so that's basically how I got started. I entered um, that group as an analyst um, and really just got to learn all about the investment community invest, um, and investment consulting. And I learned about the CFA program at that point. Um, and so while I was an analyst, I went through um, the CFA program and and was able to um, you know obtain the CFA um, within the three years that I was an analyst. And then eventually I moved on to the research group, the Global Manager Research Group, where I am today. Um, I started covering U.S. equities um, and about three years ago, I transitioned to our non-U.S. equity research team. So yeah, that's that's how I got started and kind of a little bit about what I do. Happy to expand upon any of that. Yeah, well, last time we spoke, you talked a little bit about Callan Connects and it was um, it's a program that you were part of, of launching, correct? Tell us a little bit more about that. What- yeah, absolutely. So as um, a research analyst, our job is to identify... Um, top investment manager talent. And part of that process, um, you know, requires us to, to, to reach out and, and identify organizations that we, that we might think would be great for our client base. And what we found, or at least what, um, our, as a firm we found and as a research professional, I found that, um, there's certain parts of the investment community that, um, it's, it's harder to, to reach. So some of the smaller organizations, um, or maybe organizations owned um, by women or minorities, they often get overlooked, whether for their size, um, or for their, you know, um, not having as many, I guess, connections. They're not a large, you know, well known brand. And so Callan Connects was really created to be able to identify those firms. So in 2010, we launched it. And basically every every quarter we meet with 10 to 14. Um, in the virtual world, we can meet up to 30. So that's exciting. Um, but but most of the time we were not in a pandemic. And so we would meet in person with 10 to, 10 to 14 different organizations we'd never met with before. And most of those were diverse owned firms, um, smaller emerging firms. And so yeah, it was a great opportunity to expand our knowledge of of, um, you know, different investment managers and be able to recommend those to our clients. So with your experience with Callan Connects, um, you also actually co-chair the Cal- um, Callan's Inclusion Committee, right? Like, do they go hand in hand or how did you got into that um, position? Yeah, so they definitely um, are kind of part of one mission um, around diversity and inclusion. So, you know, Callan Connects was formed in 2010, really with the effort to identify these diverse first own firms. Callan's Inclusion Committee was formed um, after that. And its original focus was really to kind of collaborate as an organization around outreach um, to these emerging firms, whether it was coordinating conference attendance or hearing from our various consulting teams that are working directly with clients and what their interests are. Um, But eventually it evolved into the Inclusion Committee to not only focus on outreach, but also to think about Callan internally. You know, what kind of policies and procedures do we have 
in place to be an inclusive organization? Are we making sure that we uh, recruit, that we train, that we mentor diverse talent? Um, so it was really kind of taking the best practices that we had been learning um, in the investment community and really trying to make sure that we are conscious about applying them to Callen. And so I co-chair that committee with our chairman, Ron Payton. Right. And Ron Payton actually have written a lot of white papers regarding culture, um, diversity. I know he wrote something back in September 2018 regarding gender diversity in the investment industry. I thought that was a fantastic um, paper. I read it. <laughs> um, and so, you know, being in the position that you have and seeing what you have through Cal and Connects and sitting on the chair for Cal Inclusion, what would you say as an individual we could do to help advance diversity and inclusion? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. And I've, I've learned so much um, just being a part of the committee, um, learning from Ron and of course, Callan's heritage. Um, Ed Callan, who founded Callan, um, was really passionate about investing with diverse organizations. So uh, I've been really fortunate to have kind of great mentors. Um, but I think beyond that, it's really just about education and increasing awareness and communication and asking questions. So, you know, I know this isn't a video, but I'm a white female. Um, mm -hmm. And so I often ask questions of my colleagues that are non-white. And I, and I ask them, you know, how do you feel about this? What do you think about that? Um, and then, you know, also promote, um, you know, things within our organization where maybe some of our colleagues don't know about, like Juneteenth. You know, do you know what that is? <laughs> Why do we celebrate it? Why is it important? Um, and so I think it's really just about uh, um, being thoughtful about educating ourselves um, and just being open to having a dialogue um, and not being afraid to say the wrong thing, because I think mm -hmm. at the end of the day, mm -hmm. the reality is um, if you're asking the questions, you're already showing that that it's important to you and that you care. And mm -hmm. so I think it really just kind of gets the ball rolling. That's great. I think you see that, you know, don't be scared to say the wrong thing. I think a lot of people do. And maybe that's why they kind of shy away for, to your point, asking those questions. And um, I guess to not make themselves look stupid, you know, like <laughs> the famous term that people always say it's like, I don't want to look stupid. And so um, I think your advice and asking the questions, but, you know, being okay, if you do maybe not say the right thing is really important reminder for everybody. Um, so you do a lot for Callan. It's very obvious and been there for quite some time, but that's not your only job. <laughs> You're, you are actually a mom of three. And how, how old are the kids? Yes. So they are four, um, almost five, uh, two and uh, nine months. Wow. So, yeah, <laughs> there, there are a lot of them. There are definitely more than we had expected. Um, we had two little boys and we were happy as clams. And then uh, little Miss Molly arrived uh, as a surprise, a pandemic baby, uh, nonetheless. And um, but yeah, no, that, that's that's the crew. So that's amazing. I mean, just hearing that makes me exhausted. And I have one. So <laughs> kudos to you and your husband. So um, have to know how how do you balance the two roles in your life? Because senior vice president in, in global manager research and working with Callan Connects and being co-chair, that's a lot to balance. How do you do it? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's an evolution really, right? So you, you know, you have your first baby and you're like, okay, logistics wise, like where are they going to go? What are they going to do? And um, so I think what I've learned is that you have to set expectations appropriately. You have to think about, you know, what can you achieve and, and make that clear. Um, and, you know, whether that's with your boss or your teammates, um, or, or even your husband, um, you know, or, or your partner, you know, this is what I can achieve. This is what I can do. Um, and I think you'll, you know, you'll learn that a little bit, you know, as you kind of get, get going. But, um, I think that's been helpful for me. And, and then also asking for help when you need it. Mm -hmm. it it's okay to ask for help. I think that's something, you know, everyone kind of has this picture of like, you know, this power working mom and, you know, she's got everything under control and, mm -hmm. I can't even tell you how many text messages I sent to my girlfriends that when, you know, my, my youngest was just a few months old and, and they, one of my girlfriends has four kids and her last two were twins. Oh, my. And my other girlfriend has three. And I, you know, and I just asked them, you know, how are you doing this? And, and, and they, you know, both have their careers as well. And so asking for help is, is okay. Um, and, and also even if it's your colleagues at work, like, you know, the, my youngest got sick and I've got to take, you know, them to the doctor. 
doctor and I'm not gonna be able to get this project done. And I just really would, would love your help. And the reality is they're happy to help you because, you know, that's, that's what you do. You know, we're, we're kind of all in this together. And I guess the last thing I would say is, is time management. Um, you know, those skills that you were supposed to learn in college. Um, I think <laughs> it's, it's crucial now because there just is so much to do. And so it's kind of, you know, just trying to develop, um, that skill set, I think is, you know, pretty crucial. So there's, you know, we were coming out of the pandemic. A lot of people, um, a lot of companies are looking and doing a hybrid or everyone's coming back to work. Um, what was your experience like having to balance motherhood during a pandemic, during lockdown? And then the second part of that is, do you, cause there, there's been discussions about women has taken the role of being more nurturing, right? Because now they were home during the pandemic and taking care of family. Do you think it'll be harder for women to go back to the workforce after like once we go back to work? Yeah. Um, those are great questions. I mean, it's funny to think about, you know, where we all were a year ago. Um, right. And <laughs> kind of just like in the crux of the, the pandemic. And, you know, at the beginning, it was incredibly challenging for, for everyone. I remember having, you know, so many conversations with all of my, you know, working parent um, colleagues talking about how are you doing this? You know, especially the ones with, with younger kids, because at the mm-hmm. beginning, we weren't able to put them, you know, in their preschools, the, the, the nannies weren't able to, to take care of the children for fear of, you know, the COVID. And, and so, you know, I remember this, you know, extensively colored Google calendar with my husband, <laughs> where it was, you know, I have a meeting at this time. So you're going to watch the boys at that time. And, and meanwhile, I'm, you know, four months pregnant and, you know, we're just trying to balance it all. And, you know, when you think it's the hardest, you learn so much from that, right? Mm-hmm. We learned how to, we learned how to do it. We learned how to do it with kids at home and we learned how to make time for work and we fit it all in and you kind of get like a little badge of honor for making it through that time period. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think the benefits of that time period is that our, you know, people at work and our bosses like saw us go through that and saw it and saw us, all of us um, women, you know, and, and, and all partners and and people with children, you know, get through it and, and get through it. Okay. And still be productive. And so coming out of it stronger. And so when you think about going forward, you know, hybrid work models and, you know, working from home, I think there's less um, concern about really having, you know, more days working from home and knowing that, you know, that their, that their um, employees can do it effectively. And so I guess taking it back to kind of, you know, as, as a mom, you know, how do you balance that? And, you know, I think, like I said, at first it was really, it's really hard, but that was because we didn't have any help. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, now the kids are back in their respective places and thriving and happy and with no commute time, um, you can really get a lot more done during the day. Mm -hmm. Um, So you just, you have less of that, you know, quote unquote mom guilt that you feel, you know, when you leave the kids at, you know, 7 a.m. and you don't see them till 6 p.m. And yeah, you got in a great work day, but you know, you barely even saw them. And so I think that there's, and so I think what the added benefit to that ends up being is generally happier employees, really. I mean, at least that's how it's been for me in that, you know, I get to see my kids in the morning and I get to see them before they go to bed. And I also get to be a productive member of my team at work. And so it's this kind of really great, um, you know, balance between the two. Now we will eventually go back and, but I, it, but I, it will not be five days a week, mm-hmm. you know, like it was before. And I think with a hybrid schedule, I think you'll find that at least working parents will just be more effective mm-hmm. with that flexibility. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you brought up a really great point in that I think with the lockdown, it's proven more so than ever that moms, mothers who have careers are able to balance or are forced to and will do so. What advice would you give um, someone, in, a young woman or anyone, any women in the industry really thinking of becoming a mother and thinking, I, I can't do this. I can't, you know, I, I work long hours. I, you know, my, I'm dedicated and married to my phone and my emails. Like, What is some advice that you can, from your own experience, um, would you share with them? Yeah, I mean, I guess I would say that there. Well, I have a lot of things to say. <laughs> but I'll try to, I'll try to like break it down into like specific criteria. I mean, you know, while I'm not quite out of it yet, and you know, because I've got four two and you know zero, um, it's I I I know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel where there 
more, there will be more time again to kind of put in those longer hours that I guess we were used to back in the, you know, the heyday when you would stay, you know, late at the office and, you know, order dinner in and, you know, it was no problem. Um, because, you know, I have mentors, I have colleagues that I can look up to. I have, you know, women and, and men, um, with, with kids that I can see that have kind of gone through that hard period that, that I'm in right now and that a lot of moms are in right now at the beginning, you know, when they're babies and they need a lot of attention and support, you know, to when your children kind of transition into, you know, higher, um, you know, middle school, high school. And, you know, yes, they need kind of some help with homework, but there's not as much of the logistical kind of details um, that, that have to be tended to. But I guess starting from the beginning, if you're planning on becoming a mom, I think one of the biggest things that, that I wish I could tell myself back in the day is just to, to give yourself a break, mm-hmm. that it, it really isn't possible to bounce back, right? So you don't just like have a baby and then like bounce back. And I mean, bounce back in a lot of different ways, <laughs> whether it's <laughs> running or mean. other things. Like let's, we don't have to get into too many details, but you know, basically, but work is one of them. Work is one of them. So I guess one of the things that, that I wish someone had told me is to take time to re-engage back at work, mm-hmm. you know, give yourself at least, I don't know. I think they always say it takes half the amount of time you dated someone to like get over <laughs> get them. Over, yeah. Maybe it takes half the amount of time that you were out to get back. Right. So say you took a four month, you know, leave and give yourself a couple of months to just re-engage, ask a lot of questions, you know, what happened while I was out and what kind of projects were you working on and what are some things that have been going on and, and don't sign up for, for, you know, projects until you really feel comfortable that you're prepared to achieve them because, you know, you're, you're learning how to balance life with a baby. You're learning how to do all of the things that you did before, but do it again, but now with extra responsibilities. And so you, you just have to have a different way of doing it. So you have to give yourself time to figure out what's the best way. Um, and then also just to know that like, you know, it's, it's not going to be the same. It, it's going to be different. You're not going to be staying at work until 6 or 7 p.m. I mean, maybe you will, maybe you'll have a nanny to help with, or maybe your partner will help, but, but it's not going to be as, as frequent as it was before. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you're just going to have to figure out what works for you and how to get things done and what adjustments you think you'll need to make, but give yourself the grace and time to figure that out. I think that we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to be like, Oh, I'm, I'm out and I'm back, you know, but that's mm-hmm. not, that's not really how, you know, how it, it should work. Mm-hmm. I think you brought up a lot of great points. And, you know, I, I think I, last time we spoke, I mentioned I have a four year old and that transition for me was difficult too. Cause, you know, I think from history, being told you're a woman already is kind of, oh, strike one, you know, because for some reason our gender makes us not equal to our male counterparts. And then adding to that, becoming a mother, uh, you know, immediately there's this negative, um, image of, oh, you can't dedicate yourself to work, but you say otherwise. You say that, yeah, we can actually fulfill our duties as a mother, but also, um, in our work. So, yeah, oh. I mean, those, I totally, and I, but I think the other thing too is like, yeah, we're going to feel like we're not doing enough. Right. I <laughs> yeah. mean, it, that, that's how, that's just how it is. And I think you just have to kind of settle into that feeling and just give yourself the time and then just keep pushing forward. I mean, I, you know, I know we talked about my kids ages, but I had a baby in 2019 and then I had a baby in 2020. So I had to tell my team, Oh, remember how I was on maternity leave last year? Yeah. I'm going to do that again. So <laughs> it was some of the hardest, you know, conversations to have. And here's a time when other of my colleagues, colleagues are really, you know, ramping up in our careers, right? We need mm-hmm. to take on, you could take on management positions, take on different com- committee roles or different, you know, things that you just want to keep pushing forward and add value to, to your companies. And meanwhile, you, it feels like you're taking a step back before you can take mm-hmm. another step mm-hmm. forward. And it is so hard. So I'm not definitely don't want to downplay any of that. It is really hard, but I think that we learn things, you know, as women being able to balance all that, that, you know, that frankly, I don't think men will ever, you know, get to, to learn because, you know, we can be resilient. We know Mm -hmm. how to do things. Um, even when we don't have as much time or even when we're set back by a few months because we, you know, we're taking care of our babies. I think there's, um, a lot added benefit to having those experiences, even if it doesn't feel like it at the time. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. The the mom guilt that you mentioned earlier, it's, I don't think it ever stops. I, I, I don't think whatever you do, it's, it's there and it's real. It's a real thing. People talk about it and, and it's a real gut wrenching, heartbreaking thing. 
Um, so to, to flip that kind of, um, you know, concept and, and, and idea, what, you know, how important is it, do you think, of getting your company support, your manager support during this time? And, and if, you know, if we have a manager maybe listening in and they have, you know, a team member or somebody that's about to go to maternity leave or they just found out, how can they be supportive? What do you think is, um, that coworkers and colleagues can do? Cause we talked about, you know, being in the one team and, and helping each other, you know, so maybe some people have no experience in this. So what would you say to them um, to kind of help along a colleague that might be becoming a mom or having a new baby? Yeah. I mean, I would think, you know, just ask, you know, about what do you think that you're going to need? And, you know, what, you know, what is your, what is your plan when you come back and would, would maybe come back part time at first? You know, I started three days a week, a few of the weeks as a kind of a gradual reentry. Um, and then, you know, if, if it's, if it, if you're a manager and, and this person reports to you thinking about project allocation and, and kind of extending that beyond, you know, when they're back. So thinking probably not going to sign any projects until, you know, you have the conversation with that person and they feel like they've really kind of got a, a better handle on their, you know, their new situation, their new life, basically. I mean, it, it's significant. So I think it's just having an open dialogue and having mm-hmm. a back and forth and just being flexible and knowing that, you know, by having that flexibility and offering that support, it, it just motivates us mm-hmm. to, do, to do everything we can, right? When someone tells you, I, I can give you all of this, you feel like, okay, and, and then I can give you all of this. And it's, you know, your time and dedication to the organization. And so I think flexibility and communication go a long way. And I also think I'm fortunate too, personally, because I have a boss. I mean, both of my bosses have, have kids and, mm-hmm. um, you know, one of my bosses is, is a woman. And so I think I, you know, I definitely can relate to her and, mm-hmm. you know, our CEO is a woman or oh, excuse me, is a woman. And, and I know, and she has three kids and, you know, she's made it as far as she has, as, you know, with all of the work that, that I know mm-hmm. that she's had at home too. And so I also think it's looking, looking up to mentors and asking those mentors, you know, what do you think is, is the best way to do this? And what's your advice? And, um, you know, really just kind of getting, you know, that kind of inspiration from, from other people who have done it, you know, before you. Mm-hmm. It's co- so more very along the lines of it takes a village, right? And not just your personal life, your professional life too. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And just always have those lines of communication open um, because, you know, that that just confirms that everybody's getting everything they need and really honestly can kind of bring their best selves to, to work. Mm-hmm. So I want to know your thoughts on the future. What do you think will happen in the next year in terms of working moms? Do you think, you know, we're going to just be, you know, changing the culture of, you know, companies and industries because now, you know, you mentioned earlier, it kind of solidified working moms as being able to handle a lot of things? Or do you think something completely different is going to happen? Like, do you think there'll be more less understanding, you know, because they're like, oh, it was easy working from home because they didn't have three kids <laughs> to kind of manage. Well, I'd love to get your opinion on that. Yeah. I mean, I think generally speaking, you know, I guess it's hard for me too, to just think kind of like as a mom, because I'm very fortunate that I, I am in a relationship where like my husband does a lot. I don't mm-hmm. think I've cooked a meal and like, you know, two years. So <laughs> there's a lot of um, support kind of at my household to kind of get things done. But I think generally speaking, you know, a hybrid model with working from home and just really allowing employees to be able to spend the time that they need to, to get what they need to get done at home. Um, and and then also to be able to commit, you know, all of that time that they gain from not commuting, you know, into their work. And we can see the output, um, you know, we, at least our organization, and I have her others, um, you know, have been pleasantly surprised and excited about the, you know, map work that has been able to be produced and, you know, they would find it hard to believe that we would move into something, you know, different or, or even go all the way back to 100%, you know, in the office for, for, for organizations that don't have to be, mm-hmm. um, you know, in person all the time. And so I think having witnessed and seen the flexibility and then also seeing the productivity, um, I just, I have to believe that that will continue, you know, down this path and that we won't kind of revert back um, to kind of the way 
it was before. Mm-hmm. So final questions here. Um, you have three little kids. So obviously, I'm sure, you know, this past year, I've seen what you do. I've seen mommy work. What do you hope that they can take away? I know they're still kind of young, but what do you hope that they could, they could take away from this? And, you know, having the experience of being with you for that solid year and a half at home. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm so conscious of that now um, because my oldest is going to be five and he just, he, he's, you know, really interested, kind of recognizes everything that goes on. And, um, you know, the other morning, uh, my husband had to, you know, go do something. And so I had to take a call while the kids were still at home. Then I was going to take them to preschool after. Mm-hmm. And, you know, my oldest was like, Oh, mommy, you're, you know, you're going to do, a, you know, some work. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go do some work, but I'll, you know, I'll be out in a little bit and, you know, then we'll, we'll go to school. The nanny was taking care of them, by the way. I didn't just leave them uh, lingering <laughs> out in the middle of nowhere, but, um, but you know, he could see that. that and, you know, uh, you know, on the other side of that too, um, you know, my husband and I really, you know, like to, you know, exercise and be outdoors and, you know, so, you know, I'll say like, Oh, I'm going to, you know, you know, go for a run and daddy's going to take you to the park and, Oh, you know, mommy, do you going to go exercise or, or mommy, have you exercised today? And, you know, so some of those things kind of, you know, started to come up and it makes you very aware of, you know, what you do and the influence it has on your children. And so there's so many ways that we can impact them. And I think knowing that, you know, they can, you know, be healthy in so many different ways that they can use their minds in so many different ways that they can be open to a bunch of different people and experiences. Like those are all things that are super important to me um, to hope to hopefully be able to kind of be, um, I guess, a, an example to them in that in those ways. And show them mommy can do it all. <laughs> she can kick butt to work, but also watch them and make them breakfast. <laughs> yes, breakfast. Pancakes with schools and blueberries because it has to have fruit at least. <laughs> right? <laughs> One serving of fruit for every meal. Exactly. That's how mom talks. So, all right. So before I let you go, I always ask... Um, all of our, all of my um, interviews, but who inspires you and why? Uh, I mean, so the first person that comes to mind when you say that is, is my dad. Um, because yeah. yes. So, you know, I mean, I think everyone kind of meets different levels of adversity in their life. And when I was nine, my dad was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Mm. And, you know, at first it didn't seem like it was, you know, going to be, you know, that incredibly challenging, but he has the progressive form of the disease. So over time, um, you know, he slowly was unable to to walk. And so he's been in a wheelchair, you know, most of my um, life now. Um, but I guess why he inspires me is because, you know, he continues to, to get up and do what he loves to do every day. Uh, he goes to work every day. Um, he, you know, still, you know, is, is an avid reader and he likes to go to spring training for the San Francisco Giants and <laughs> in Scottsdale and he, you know, has his passion and he still, he does all of those things. And, um, and he always did that. And he always did that, um, for himself, I think because he's inspired by his work, but also for us, I have a brother as well. And, um, so I think when I think about my family and I think about, you know, going to work and exercising and doing all those things, it's, it is for my family so that, you know, my children can have the experience that I had growing up where I could had somebody to look up to somebody who is, you know, putting in hard work so that I could live, um, honestly, a very privileged life. And I think that um, I'm just impressed because most people do that with an able body and he did it every day, you know, without that. Um, and so I'm inspired by that. And then, you know, also really inspired by my mentors. And, you know, this conversation kind of kicked off with, you know, working, working, mo- working female, working mom. Um, you know, I have a lot of mentors at my organization that I mentioned. Um, that that I have to look up to um, in that respect. And hopefully I can be as successful as them as well. I think so. I think you're in the right path. <laughs> well, Lauren, thank you again so much for your time. I, I love talking to you and I love, you know, my favorite topic is obviously being a working mom. And I think you brought some really great insights um, to the table today and a lot of inspiring things. You know, I, I definitely, my takeaway would definitely be um, how you mentioned it, that you can, you know, balance, even though it doesn't feel like you're balancing it, it is possible. So I want to thank you so much for your time and sharing your wisdom with us um, this afternoon. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening to this month's Meet a Member podcast. We hope you enjoyed the engaging discussion. Please stay tuned for more Meet a Member podcast episodes featured every fourth Tuesday in our weekly newsletters and through our podcast channel available through most major podcast apps.